Okay, so a quick little video in regards to this Ag Open GPS. Start a new field. So I've added contour and stuff like that. It actually works. One of the things that always pissed me off about the Outback is when you went from contour back to AB, you always had to pick your AB line. So, not anymore. Okay, let's make an AB line. A. B. There's the tram line. The guy from Europe really wanted this. Um, to half and it repeats. So it repeats every three times. And here's the starting position. Just because you make the AB line on that pass doesn't mean that's the starting one. So you can set it whatever the pass number is. This number here. Whatever you want that is your original. If we make it at one. Zoom over there. Here, minus one. And pass number minus one is your reference. The tram line. So now every three will be a tram line. One, two, three. Or tram. Two, three. Anyway, pretty basic. So now we have your AB line. You can click into contour and it automatically becomes contour. I've turned all the display stuff on so you can see this is a side to get away from that other way of doing it. And this is the same way the display eliminates triangles that aren't part of the display, that frustum culling. So if we whip around, it only takes the dots that are inside the box. You see the light blue ones are all the dots that are potential for making the new contour line. And the dark blue one is the one that's closest to the antenna. So that becomes your reference point. From the reference point and using all these points, you can create your line and your distance away from the line. And from that, you can get your AB, your auto steer, and everything. So uh, the red dots are just constantly being recorded and uh, using them for making the contour line. If you're uh, away, then of course it won't work. The other thing is, if you're at, like coming to a headland, you don't want to, you don't want to see a line, a new line here because you're crossing a headland. So Depending on the angle you approach, it also determines whether or not that's off or on. Another cool thing is, hit contour, now you're back at AB. Contour, AB, contour, AB. Rather than trying to just say the outback makes you force and pick an AB line again, hate that. So uh, you can switch back and forth accordingly. The other thing I've done is eliminated the, um, the zoom in buttons. You just click on the right side to go in left side to go down, and three-dimensional, top third in this area and this area, you can adjust the angle up or down, and zoom in and zoom out. Handy dandy. The other concept is this MIP map. I know I haven't written it up yet, but if we go by polygons, as we zoom out, let me go 2D, as we zoom out, resolution required becomes less and less the farther you get away. So why draw all the triangles? So as we zoom out, you can see there's less and less triangles. So now there's two. Two triangles make one triangle when it's displayed. Then four, then eight. Now it's eight. Then 16. 16 triangles along a path make one triangle. So as you zoom out, you can't tell because if you're so far away. One little pixel is like 200 triangles, so there's no point in drawing 200 triangles, just draw one. So that's what the MIP map stuff does. It just changes resolution based 
on how far you are away. Just saves a lot of processor time. And of course, as you zoom in, it just displays all the triangles. Also added under display is here unchecked. Um, Notorium likes to use the heading as a cam, so you can choose that one or the other. This triangle resolution, normally around one. If you put that up at two, that is a long way between triangles. If the tablet or whatever is having trouble keeping up, draw less triangles, and it significantly increases the the frame rate which it can run and how many triangles you can draw. Again, if I decrease the distance between each triangle, it'll just draw more triangles. So you can use that based on your processor speed.